Jedi Jack Penguin, and today I'm bringing you another LEGO Harry Potter review. So finally, I am going to be reviewing set number 71043, Hogwarts Castle. This set includes 6,020 pieces and retails for $399.99 in the US. This set came out back in September of 2018. This was part of the, I guess, extended first wave of LEGO Harry Potter sets that came out back in 2018. This is the only set from that year that I have not reviewed, so I decided might as well do it while we're in quarantine right now. Just woke up in the middle of the night and felt like, yeah, I need to review the set right now, so let's just get right into it. So. The box art for this set is just something beautiful. I love the box art for this set. The moon and the sky and everything is just perfect. The water it blends in very nicely with the background. I really like how that looks. We get the Wizarding World logo on the very bottom. The Lego Harry Potter logo at the very top. I really like how they didn't ruin it by putting your main characters at the very top. I, I just think that it's perfect the way it is. You get the regular stuff off the side and then of course there are minifigures down here. No micro figs until you hit the very top of the box. Also note that there is an interior to the set which is something that probably stopped me from reviewing this quickly because I do tend to talk a lot when it comes to the Lego Harry Potter theme and you might see that just based off previous stuff. I do plan on doing some collection videos very soon with the 2018 and the 2019 sets so you guys can look forward to just some quick tidbits with all of that. But flipping the box over, let's take a look at the very back. The very back of the box features the interior of this set showing a lot of the different play features or at least I guess display features with your characters within the set. There are a lot of stickers which I'll show in a little bit but here is a look at the very back just showing all the interior shots. I really like how they did display that very nicely and this box is quite a large box which is why I do have to pause separately to flip it around we get the lego harry potter logo at the top and then the set number as well as the lego.com slash harry potter on the very bottom the very top of this box features the lego and harry potter logo set number a measurement for this set right here in comparison also to the one from harry potter and the philosopher's stone your first look at hogwarts we also get a look at all of our little micro figs, those nano figs right there on the very bottom. And then we also get an actual size of one of the pieces, just if you are interested. Sides of the box don't feature too much of anything interesting. You just get some other looks on the very side right here. You get your mini figures as well as just some smaller pictures and the logos that you normally get. And then the very bottom features the Lego Harry Potter logo, very nice and big. And then the barcode for this set and the Lego trademark. Sorry for the lighting on that very last part, but that is all for the box. Very nice big box for us to get right into. So yeah, let's take a look at the instructions and then we're gonna take a look at our minifigures and then the final overall model. So, okay, I laid out all the bags to the set, so it's just crazy how many bags there are in the set. We have 37 numbered bags and three unnumbered bags with just some of the big bulkier pieces. So pretty much, all of the pieces were loose inside the box, minus like the first couple bags of the set and the instructions were found inside this random white box right here. So the random white box was all the way at the bottom of the normal box and it had bags numbered one through say 13, 14, 15, somewhere around there. And then all of the rest of the bags were included within the normal box. Also, these unnumbered bags were included inside this white box as well. And then we also have the instructions, which we'll take a look at in a second. Looking at the instructions right here, we get a total of four instruction manuals within the set. There are some things within them, which we'll take a look at in a second. And then we also get a total of 63 stickers that you can apply to this set, which I did apply all those stickers because we have to make this set look as beautiful as it does within the pictures on the box. There are just a lot of stickers. That's really all, that's the, like the only thing that I don't like about this set, the amount of stickers that was included, but it does look pretty nice when you take a look at all the details after all of that. But here's just a quick layout of all of the instructions, all four of the instruction booklets and then all four of the sticker sheets. 
taking a look at the first and fourth instruction manuals. Those are the only ones to include any of the extra information that you normally find within D2Cs or any other types of regular Lego sets. So taking a look at the first instruction manual right here, like I said, these are book type instructions. Very front pretty much mimics the box right here minus the fact that these are more of a vertical look and that they have the instruction page number at the very top, Wizarding World Lego in the corner. We can flip right in. It gives you some information about Hogwarts right here in a bunch of different languages. You can see that we start in English and then we move on to the other languages with a very nice picture of this set. We can move forward. We have some information about the design team and everything, which I think is really cool that they do include these within these larger Lego Harry Potter sets. You can see them all pictured right there. It moves into English. It moves from English to a bunch of other different languages. You can see just all of these looks at the set. I really think it's interesting when you see the set disassembled like that. It's just really cool and like the graphic designers and everything. I really like seeing this type of information within these types of Lego sets and this is the second largest Lego set in existence. This is the second largest piece count within a Lego set compared to the UCS Millennium Falcon which I also own from 2018. So taking a look over here we have some other information. Well actually this is the same exact stuff in just different languages moving forward for a couple of different pages. If you're interested in that kind of information, you guys can check out the instructions within your own set or you can find it on lego.com. And then that finally brings you to the start of this build right here, which shows what you can build from this specific instruction booklet. And then that does bring you to the very back, which features the wind guy. And then you can move forward to a Lego life advertisement and then how to carry Hogwarts, which I think is very interesting to show how you're supposed to carry this model, which I will, of course, carry it like this when I do bring it over to this table, and I will not break it, so that's just one thing to note. And then there's a transition to the second instruction booklet. The second and third instructions only include the building steps and everything, but the fourth one, if you move all the way to the very back of the instructions, sadly, this is actually a little bent, which I'm not really too happy about. We have the piece count for a couple of pages right here of this one. And then we have this page right here, which I think is very interesting to show that they were able to put the piece count of this set on these individual pages. And it isn't even small, the pieces, if you look at like the size of some of these, there's a probably a number of certain pieces within this set, which I think is pretty crazy. Guess we have another additional page. I guess I might have skipped that when I was taking a quick glance so then I know what I'm talking about here. And then there's the final overall model for this set right here and how you connect both pieces of Hogwarts, which this can be separated into this model, which I will show later on. So let's take a quick look at the extra pieces and then we're gonna look at our minifigures and the nano figs and the smaller builds and then the final overall model for the overall Hogwarts build. Taking a look at the extra pieces, we do get quite a number of extra parts. We also get one of these orange brick separators if you're interested. We get four extras of those wands in four different colors, which I think is very nice using that old style from 2018. We also get a lot of one by one pieces. Since this is a micro scale type set, we get a lot of cheese slopes, a lot of one by one plates, a lot of one by one tiles, a lot of studs as well. We also get a lot of different types of pieces like Technic pieces. We also get some of those nano figs in just some plain colors. We get an extra one of those beard pieces inside that orange color right there, which is used on your Godric Gryffindor minifigure. Very nice to see that we get an extra one of those if you're interested in trying to make a character like the Taskmaster from the new Black Widow movie. I know a lot of people have been wanting that minifigure. That's a very nice part for that. We get some fire pieces, just a lot of very nice pieces in general for our extra pieces. Just thought I'd lay them out since I still had them within a container. And yeah, that's pretty much all for those. Taking a look at our first minifigure, we have Godric Gryffindor himself. This is the first time that we're getting any of the Hogwarts founders within LEGO form, which I'm really happy that LEGO decided to put it in here out of all of the LEGO sets that they could have put it in instead of wasting a spot within the collectible minifigures line. I feel like this was the perfect way 
to introduce these characters as minifigures. So taking a look at Godric Gryffindor, all of these characters are exclusive to the set, which is a very nice bonus. We get two accessories with this minifigure, one being his wand inside that brown color, the regular wand piece for the 2018 Lego Harry Potter sets, and then the other one being this sword piece, which is supposed to represent the sword of Godric Gryffindor. Very cool to see that we get that within the set. I would have liked to maybe have seen a print on that. Hopefully they do actually make one with a print that says Gryffindor's sword on there. That would be really cool if LEGO could do that sometime in the near future. Other than that, we do get some very nice leg printing on this character. I'm just gonna move the wand to this side so then we can get a better look at that. Those are some very nice legs. Really love how that works right there on the front of the legs up to the belt piece, connecting very nicely with the torso printing. Very nice dark red torso, very nice printing for the front of that. We get some dark red arms and some dark brown hands for some gloves. We also get this very nice dark brown cape. Very interesting to see that they went like very dark colors on these characters. If you flip up his cape, you can take a look at his back printing right there. Very nice that we do get that. Even though it is covered up by the cape right there, I really like that they do include that. We get this very nice orangey beard piece right here, the Santa Claus beard inside that orange color. I think that's very nice to see that we get that. We do get a duplicate of that within our extra pieces that I showed previously. And then of course we do get the swept back hair piece inside that orange color as well. I really like getting that hair piece inside that color. Taking a look at his facial expressions, you can take off his hair piece. I'm gonna wiggle his head up so then we can get a better look at that. So here's a better look at the facial expression underneath the beard. I think that's a very nice headpiece as well with the orange eyebrows. Just that facial expression I think would be very useful for some custom minifigures. There's a look at the back, no back printing for the head, no double-sided facial expression. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I gotta say for our minifigure of Godric Gryffindor. Taking a look at our next minifigure, we have Helga Hufflepuff. Just like all of our other minifigures, we get a wand inside that dark brown color. And then for her other accessory, I'm really happy that they included the founder's objects with these characters. We get Helga Hufflepuff's cup right there. Very nice that we get that. That is also a Hulkrux, I guess later on within the Harry Potter films. Very nice to see that we get that. As just another reference, I will point them out with the later two founders as well. We also get some very nice printing on this character. I really like that they went all out with the printing on these minifigures. That's just something that I really like about the Lego Harry Potter theme. You get some very nice printing on that skirt piece inside that nougaty color. Very nice to get it in that color. We also get some front printing for the torso piece, which works very nicely with the printing on the skirt piece. We get the nougat colored arms, light flesh hands for the flesh tone. I don't think we get any back printing. Oh wait, maybe we do. We get some back printing and even some back printing on the skirt piece, which I think is a bonus right there. You know, that just shows how invested Lego is within the Harry Potter theme. We get a dark brown cape for her character, and then we get a double-sided facial expression. There's a look at the first side. Really, really, really nice facial expressions on these characters. I really like that. And then you can turn around her facial expression to get another happy face on the other side. And then we get that Endor Leia hair piece inside that plain brown color, which also has a hole on the top if you do want to put something there, but I don't really advise that. So yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigure of Helga Hufflepuff. Our next minifigure is Salazar Slytherin. Very nice character to get. I really like how he turned out. He just looks super creepy and all that. We get a wand for his accessory inside that dark tan color. Very nice to get that. We also get some very nice printing on the legs and torso piece. Works interconnectively very nicely. And I will be taking off the beard so then we can get a better look at that torso piece. I really like the printing on that and you'll see why in a little bit. We get some dark green arms, light flesh hands for the flesh tone. We get this very interesting cape. I really like that he gets like this black regular cape and then also like this little bit that comes up sort of like a vampire but not really. You can see how that works right there. We get some back printing on his torso, which I think is very nice as well. And then we get only the one-sided facial expression since he is technically a bald character. And then he gets the Sensei Wu beard for his character, which I think fits him pretty well. If you take off his headpiece and we can take a look at his torso. Here's a better look at the torso printing, which reveals Slytherin's locket. I really like that we get that as a little 
printing reference on his character very nice that they include that and then another look at his facial expression which looks very nice i really like the facial expression for his character and of course all the prints are new for these characters and definitely a piece that you probably would want to use on some other characters so yeah that's pretty much all for salazar slytherin and then our final minifigure within this set is Rowena Ravenclaw. Very nice to get her as well. You can see that we get another dress piece for her minifigure. She gets a black wand for her accessory. Get some very nice printing on the dress piece leading up to the torso. I really like all of the printing that they include on these minifigures. And then in addition, we get some back printing on the dress piece as well as the torso piece. So removing your hair piece, you can take a better look at the back printing on her minifigure. And also the front printing as well. She gets some dark blue arms, light flesh hands for the flesh tone. She also does get a double-sided facial expression, which I think is amazing for her character. We get the printing for, for the diadem right there. I really love that they include that. That's just something that I really like. And then you can also take a look at her back facial expression where she's not too happy. There's a look at the first facial expression with the hair piece. And then we can also take a look at the other facial expression, just turning that around right there really nice that we get this minifigure within the set very nice look to her character so yeah that's pretty much all for rowena ravenclaw in addition to our minifigures we also get this very nice display stand for them i really like that lego included that so then you can display all these characters very nicely the one thing that i don't like about this though is that we get the stickers on these two by two tile pieces for the houses. I would have liked to see the prints since I know that they actually made prints for these within 2019. I wish that they actually released those in 2018 but there probably wasn't too much of a big budget for that with all the other new pieces that they were releasing for this theme but I'm really happy that we still get them just as stickers but I would have liked to see some prints. You can see that we get these 2x2 two two tile pieces right there, one in dark red with Gryffindor, we get one in yellow for Hufflepuff, one in dark green for Slytherin, and then one in dark blue for Ravenclaw. You can then spin around this area right here. You can just take a look at how this looks. I really like that they also kept it with like this tan sort of look just to blend in nicely with the rest of the castle, like as if they're standing within the castle right there using that regular tan as well as the dark tan. And then of course your characters are standing on these one by two jumper plates inside tan as well just to show that those characters stand like that they're all the same just going along the line and then using the studs on the side method for the little stands just showing what house these characters represent so yeah that's pretty much all for the stand that's included with your minifigures in addition to our minifigures, we also do get a number of these nano figures. Some of them are actually within the castle itself, those being the Death Eater slash Dementor ones that are just floating around, which I'll show what which I'll show as we look at the model. But these are some of the named characters as well as some of the non-named characters, just the random students that they included within the set. So we're gonna just start all the way over here. I'm gonna try and get the best view that we can. Right at the front, we have Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Very nice characters. These characters also only have printing on the very front of their characters, which I think is very interesting that they went this route for the minifigures. And also, I really love the unmounted detail that they put on these. I think that LEGO did a wonderful job with that. We also get, towards the back, some of our teacher characters. We get the year one Dumbledore look right there, which I think is very nice that they included that. We get Professor McGonagall. We get Argus Filch right here, and then we get Severus Snape, and then the later two Defense Against the Dark Arts teachers right here, we get Remus Lupin and Dolores Umbridge. Very interesting to see Umbridge within the set. I would have liked to see some of the other characters as well, but, you know, there's only so much you can do. Behind them, we have some of the student characters right here, which some of these I can't really name since they didn't really give names to some of these characters, but some, some of them you can point out as certain characters. Like right here, we have Neville Longbottom, and then over here, how we have Draco Malfoy. Very interesting to see these characters just being represented in LEGO form. I'm just gonna zoom in just a teeny bit more. Hopefully we don't lose quality there. But just taking a look, we might even have Ginny Weasley here. You never know. Just taking a quick look at all these characters. Very interesting to see them all within this set right here. And then we leave all the way back here, and that's the last of those 
unnamed characters that are just the students from various houses, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. And then in the very back we have our two bad guy characters within the set. We have a little nano figure of Lord Voldemort. I really like that they even chose to put him within the dark green outfit. And then we have Bellatrix Lestrange, which this was the first time that we're actually getting her other than the 2010 The Burrow set, but we will be getting two versions, at least I know of two versions of her minifigure within this year, 2020. One within the collectible minifigure series 2 in September, and then another one within a possible Burrow remake, which also just leaked a couple seconds ago while I was looking at my phone, but otherwise just a very interesting selection of characters, and then these do fit very nicely with a lot of the different scenes that are shown within this castle. So yeah, that's pretty much all for these nanofigs. One thing to note also, I might as well just say this, that this plate right here, this base plate piece is not included within the set. Moving into the small builds included within the set, first one that we have is Hagrid's Hut, which I think that they very accurately represented Hagrid's Hut within a micro scale form. I really like how they did it, including actual both sides, which they also included coincidentally within the 2019 actual minifigure scale dollhouse type style one. I really like how the doors are brown right there just to represent that makes it easy to look at that. We get the little pumpkin patch right here. I really like that they include that. Some little steps just leading up to Hagrid Hut. We also do get a little chimney going on right there. Very tops look very nice. Really like how those are represented. And then on the very back we get Aragog. I really like that they also included him in comparison at least to a nano figure. You can see just how that works, how Aragog how that small regular spider is compared to a Harry Potter minifigure. The one thing that I do have to complain about though is the color of the spider that they included. I think that they probably could have put a black spider in there, it probably would have worked a little bit better just like color wise, but I don't know why they included this weird nougat colored spider within the set. But either way, this is a very nice miniature size build of Hagrid's hut and then it's all lying on one of these sort of two half circular plate pieces right here so yeah that's all for Hagrid's hut. The next build included is the Whomping Willow which is also right outside the Hogwarts grounds. I really like that they included this little build as well. This is also very nice. You can spin this around in circles. You can also move the arms of this right here. You can see how those move just back and forth using those clip pieces. This part is a little bit delicate. This part likes to fall off a little bit. I also like how they represented the little hole right there at the very bottom, which also leads to the Shrieking Shack. Hopefully we do get a version of that in LEGO sometime in the near future. We can also just take a look around the base of it, just a lot of different slope pieces. I also like how they use these stem pieces right here. And also it doesn't break as easily as the 2018 version, the actual minifigure scale one. In addition, we also get this mini little Ford Angula car. I really love how they just that's just so crazy how they represented it like that using roller skate piece and then one of these jumper plates one by two inside that lighter blue color and then just those one by ones right on top of it. I really like how they included that and then also in addition in size comparison to your minifigures of or nano figs of Harry and Ron. I don't really think that works very well if you just take a quick zoom in right there you can see how that is size comparison wise. I don't think they can fit inside there, but I think it's just very, very nice that they were able to make it in that small of a scale to make it work. I think that's just really creative of Lego. And in addition, if you wanted to see how that works in addition to being in front of the Whomping Willow, your minifigure size comparison, that's just really crazy to think. But yeah, very cool. Small little builds in addition within this set. And then the final small builds included within the set are all of these small little boats. We get a total of five boats to help sail across to the front entrance boatway into the Hogwarts castle. I really like how when you start building this set, you start by building the boats and then it just is a traveling experience to Hogwarts and it brings you right to the very front of the boat ground area where it then leads you all the way up to the Great Hall which I think is amazing that they even represented that very accurately. Though Hogwarts is a lot larger than what this set can show, 
I think that LEGO did a wonderful job representing it, which I'll get more into that when we look at the interior and exterior details. But right now, we're just going to take a quick look at one of these boats. So starting off with just this one boat, they all are the same exact build. We get a total of five of them. Really like how they actually made these. The one thing that I think is the most interesting build feature is that they use these window pieces right here as like the main base for like the outer look at the boat. I really like how they did that. That's very interesting to show Lego is actually doing a weird, I don't know if this is an illegal building technique or not, but it's just a very interesting building technique that I really haven't seen used before. I think it's very nice. We also get this dark blue piece right here just to represent the water area that this is going on and also a translucent stud as well just right there. But either way you can fit at least one minifigure within here. You can't get them to lodge onto the studs because they're too close to the outer look at the boat. But if you want to you can place a minifigure dead center or a nano figure dead center. I don't know why I keep saying minifigure, but you can put your minifigure of or nano figure of Harry Potter right there in the center stud area right there. Really nice how they can do that. But I would have liked to see some more characters. You can just put them loosely if you want, but that doesn't really help the cause of this little boat. So yeah, that's all for these little boats. So let's get right into looking at the exterior of Hogwarts. Okay, so here is the final overall model for the Hogwarts Castle Micro Scale Direct to Consumer set. Overall, this is a beautiful set and there is a lot to talk about, which is why I didn't get to reviewing this set in the first place. There is a lot that I want to talk about and I want to keep it short and quick. Also note that there will be some jumping around. I will be editing to make this as short as possible since I know a lot of people don't really like me to drone on about things. I'm really working on getting that to the point. So starting all the way down here, we're going to start at the very start of our journey to Hogwarts. We have the Boathouse, which this is also very cool because I think that there is a sticker that you can barely even see right there. I think that that is probably really just like the craziest detail that they could even put in here. They put the Hogwarts point system right there. I think that that's just crazy that they even put that within this set and it's so small of a detail you don't even freaking notice it until like you start building the set you see all of the different details that they put into this thing I think that that's crazy that they put that in there and you can see it just like right there very nice and then we also have some lights from just right outside the house of course your minifigures can fit inside this general area which I think is very nice as well you can see that in size comparison to one of your nano figs you can see that but the boats do not fit through there. You just bring your boats to the very edge and that's where your characters are left off to enter that area which can bring you up to the Great Hall. Moving up from this area, you can see that we also have a very nice little tower bit that goes up there. I don't really know what's going on there, just a, another little tower bit that goes up from that particular area. Taking a side view over here, you can also see that we get these slope pieces inside this tan color. This is supposed to represent the pathway that's leading all the way up slowly up here to this little open area. I really like that they include an open area up there. Also right here you see some of the first printed pieces within the set. Some of the really cool printed parts that I really like that are included being these window pane pieces. I really like that they include these within the set. We get a number of those which I think is very nice that we get a bunch of printed pieces within the set. We use them over here. We also use them towards the other side of the castle which is the second part. One thing to note about this castle, which I might as well do right now just to make things easier on myself, is that you can separate it into two parts, but you can see that you can separate it like that. We get some Technic pin pieces within both sides just so then you can clip it together since it is two pieces. It's easier to handle within two pieces compared to holding both of them at the same time since you're more liable to break it if you're holding both. So moving that part to the side, we can take a better look at this piece. I'm going to bring it forward. The sides of the model all include a little bit of rocky areas. Using a variety of different colors, we get some of this dark tan as well as this light gray and also this olive green over here. We also get some tree builds, which I think is very clever using the stick piece and then these flower stem pieces right there inside that regular green color. Moving to this side. You can take a better look at this side. Here's some more of that rocky area going on this side. 
Very nice that LEGO went all out with just like the bottom area of Hogwarts. And then underneath here should probably be the Chamber of Secrets, either on this side or the other side. I really like that they actually gave this a base, unlike the 2018, 2019, and moving forward actual minifigure scale ones. I would have liked to see a Chamber of Secrets remake, but I don't think that's really possible at this time, as most of the characters that we want from that will be coming within the collectible minifigure series or something else. Moving to this side, you can see some more of that rocky formation from the bottom, and then that does bring you to the interior section, which I'm not gonna get to right now because I wanna just talk about the overall outer details first. So moving upwards, we can see that we have some torches all along the round area of the Great Hall. I really like that they include that, and it also includes the area where you can have filch just going around this general area. I really like that they include that just as an another reference, I guess, within this set. That's very nice that they include that. We also get a lot of very interesting like building techniques just all around this general area. I think that LEGO did a wonderful job with that. And just having some studs exposed like everywhere, I really like that in addition. Can move to this side. And you can see all of the colors right here. I really like how like the light goes through these translucent pieces just to give a little bit more flavor to this set. I really like that. That's very nice that they went all out with the coloring of the windows. Gives it a little bit more color. Get some more looks at this side and also at the very top of this building. I really like how that looks. Using a lot of new pieces as well within the set. A lot of new like arch type pieces which works very well with the architecture of this micro scale building. You can see a lot of the spiky bits. I really like all that. And also a lot of different slope pieces being used throughout as well. Moving to the very front, we also get some more of these stickered pieces right here at the very front. We get a stickered 2x2 two two circular tile piece right there just for like this clock. We also get another sticker right in that general area behind it, which has some more of this like fencing going on right there. Very nice that they include that. We get some stickers for the front doors that are included right here in front of the Great Hall. Very nice that we get that. And then we also get a statue of the Hogwarts Architect, which I think is very nice that they include that as another, I guess, reference or maybe even a teaser for the Avon Calendar, which included the actual minifigure scale version of that statue, which is very cool to get as well. You can see just like the overall look at this middle center area. I like that they include that. I would have liked to see maybe like a water fountain or something in the middle. I don't know if that's that particular section of Hogwarts because I remember that from the Lego Harry Potter video games somewhat, but I might be a little bit off when it comes to that. But still a very nice area just to have your characters hang out. Those doors can open. I'll show from the other side in a little bit. Can move over here. We have this big, large tower to the side of the Great Hall, which is sort of accurate, I guess, to the 2018 version, since we do get a big tower to the side of the Great Hall within that set that came out. We also get some stickers over here, just as some more windows. I really like that they add some more detail there, though they do represent a lot of the windows over here at the very top using a lot of these trans clear pieces. Another thing that I did want to point out though about this tower is I do really like the building techniques of how they made this round like that using a lot of different tile pieces and slope pieces and whatnot. I really like how they did that. That just looks so beautiful in my opinion and it even feels very nice just taking a look at that. You know, I would have liked to see it go all the way around but we do have to have an interior to the set which I'll take a look at in a little bit. Moving all the way down, we have some more Technic pieces exposed right here. This is where you connect to the other side of Hogwarts that I removed before, which is all the way over there. And we also have this little area over here, which has this little opening. This is where you slide in the end of the bridge, which is very nice that they also include that as another reference, which can also, I guess, you can pretend to blow that up if you want. That's a very nice little reference again to the Deathly Hollows, They reference all the like all of the Harry Potter movies within the set, and I think that LEGO does a, does a wonderful job with that. We also just have a flat area going on over here just for where that connects to the other side of the castle. And then that does bring us to the interior, so let's take a look at that. 
getting right into the interior, we're going to start with the main big tower right here, which also includes the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets, which also includes this sticker right here. I really like that they include that just as like the main entrance to the Chamber of Secrets. I think that's very clever of LEGO to have put that in there. Moving up from this area, we also have some staircases from Hogwarts. I really like that they include this just as another little reference. I don't really like how these staircases look. I think that LEGO probably could have done something better, though I do like the fact that they can move. If you want to have them move, you can move them in a somewhat 360 direction, only side to side. It does stop at the very edge. That's the one thing that I don't really like, though I think that that's okay just for what it is. You can do that with both this one and then the one that's above it. We get two of those. You can also see right behind there, we also get a lot of different stickers, which I think is also very interesting just to show all of these different portraits right here. There are a lot of different weird and interesting references if you look closely within some of these portraits. You can see that we even have one of Slytherin himself right there. We also have some of like the designers put themselves within these portraits, which I think is very nice that they even decided to reference themselves within the set. Moving upwards from there, we also get another set of those portraits, which I will just keep it quick as I move through these. Just just show them off since I know that other people probably have this set and they just want to take a look at it themselves if they get the set or if you're planning on getting the set this is definitely a way just as a little teaser and then all the way at the very top probably my favorite reference within the set is that we get Moaning Myrtle's bathroom we definitely need this as a Lego set though we are getting an actual Moaning Myrtle minifigure within the Harry Potter series 2 minifigures this year in September I really like that we're getting that they have a little reference of Moaning Myrtle ghost nano fig right there at the very top I really like that they included that just as a small little reference and then we also have the sink area right there at the very top and then we also have Little tidbit right there of the Prefect's bathroom on the side is another sticker just showing the mermaid stained glass right there. I really like that they just include all these references right there and then they also have the stalls in the very background of the girls' bathroom. So this area right here can bring you all the way down to the entrance of Chamber of Secrets which then can bring you to the Chamber of Secrets which is right underneath the Great Hall. Moving up one more time we have some more features over here. We have the winged gargoyle entrance to Dumbledore's office. We also have some additional stickers right here. We just have them on the very side and also some more torches right there. Really like that they put that as a reference right there, having his gargoyle at the very top. Freehanding the rest of the very top right here since my camera can't go any higher on that tripod. You can see that we get some stickers inside Dumbledore's office. We get little fox right there. I really like that they include that. As another little reference, you can see him right there next to some portraits. We get some books going on right there. It's a little dark in this general area. You can see that we have the very back right there. I really like all the different references. I really like how Lego includes that. You can see that we have Dumbledore's desk. You can place him up inside his office if you want to, since we do get him as a minifigure. We get some more portrait stickers right up here. If we move this to the very side, you can see some more portraits and some other little references. We get the Sword of Godric Gryffindor and the Sorting Hat as another sticker, just trying to get the best look that I can possibly get of that. It's a little hard since it is a little dark in that general area. But other than that, this is all atop on this big, large tower area. I also really like that they do reference just having some extra little tower bits coming up at the very top here. Very nice that they do that. They do that very often with the Harry Potter sets. And then we also have a reference to the Goblet of Fire on this other side, which I will have to carefully spin this back over here. You can see over here that we have the Hungarian Horntail, which I guess is another reference to another 2019 set right there that they were working on. Very nice to see that. That can clip right off. You can see how that works right there using a lot of different clip pieces. We get the battle droid body inside that dark brown color right there on the very back. We have the tail connected. I really like how the tail turned out. The wings I think are okay using the Minoc wings right there in that same dark tan color. And then just the very front of it. I don't really like how the face looks. I think that they could have done a better job just like how they did with the 2019 version of his character. Though I do like how they use the stamp pieces on the very bottom for his feet. So then he can clip down to the studs on the very top of the tower. I also like how the very top of the tower also has some extra little detailing using these silver curved top 
tile pieces right there, those one by ones, those are very nice to get. Can move the castle to this side again. Can just see the other side of these connecting areas, just how that looks. Very nicely done by Lego. And then that does bring you to the very top and interior of the Great Hall. So the very top of the Great Hall, we get three of these different sized towers right here, these two being the same on each of the ends, and then this one big one in the middle. We get some Death Eaters and Dementors going on over here. I guess they are Death Eaters, or probably Dementors, since they have like capes and stuff. They don't really have any like real faces to them, they're just plain black. I do like that they did make that as a new mold for this set, though. I think that LEGO did a wonderful job with that. Starting off down here, we have the Chamber of Secrets. We get some stickers right here for the very front of it. You can see how we get the stickers on the face statue of Slytherin himself right there. And then we also get that new snake mold inside that sand green color. I really like that we get it within that color. That's a really cool color to get that in. And then we also get those snake front head pieces from Ninjago Dark Gray right there. Very nice to get those. We have the water on each side of it. I think that this probably should run out a little bit farther right there, though I'm not really complaining. I like how that turned out. It's just enough just to give you a little reference look to the Chamber of Secrets. So yeah, that's all for that. You can also just see that there's some of the interior bits just showing from each side. It just shows that the cave goes on. And then there's probably like pipes and stuff underneath the school. Moving up, we have the Hogwarts Great Hall, which is represented even more accurately than probably any of the other Hogwarts Great Halls before it. I really like how they did all of these different details on the set. Right here from the very side, you can see that we get some stickers. Very nice to see that we get some more stickers within this set. There's just a lot of different stickers. And that's all for the stickers on that side. We also get some stickers as the flags on the very top right here, which have one flag for each of the houses. Ravenclaw, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Gryffindor, all on these Transclear pole pieces right there, very nice. We have the outside look to the windows, which you saw from the very front when I showed that within the beginning. We also have the flames lining the edge of the Great Hall. I really like how they used the stamp piece and then the new flame piece for 2018 Harry Potter right there within this set, that's very nice. We have the front doors to the Great Hall over here. We also have another reference to the Order of the Phoenix right there with all of those little decrees from the Ministry hanging up on the side of the wall. I really like that they also included that as a reference right there when Umbridge was at Hogwarts. We have the front doors, another sticker at the very top of that right there. And those are the front doors to the Great Hall. And then all four Hogwarts house tables right there, Slytherin, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw right there in the very center, and then the teacher's podium area right there in the back. Very nice that they put all of that there, and there's plenty of room for all of your characters. There's no places to actually place your characters like stud-wise on these benches, but I think it's very nice and accurate for what it is. So yeah, that's pretty much all for that. There's a back look at the very top of the back of the Great Hall area showing off those Death Eaters all floating up within the air and everything. And that's pretty much all that I gotta say for this portion of Hogwarts. So taking a look at the next portion, we're gonna move this to the front and we're gonna take a look at the outside and then the interior bits to this and that'll finish up this video. Moving on to the final bit of Hogwarts right here, we can take a look at the outside areas. We get a lot of more rocky formations like the last one just on the exterior as well as some of more of these tree builds right here just clipped on by clip pieces. We also get the Hogwarts bridge right here in the middle which I think is a very nice inclusion by Lego that's really cool to see within the set. And then of course that does connect to the other side of Hogwarts that we just looked at which I'll show towards the end. Right here we have the main sort of like front area of Hogwarts. Just another look at this. I really love how they included all of these different colors from the outsides of the windows right there. How that looks looks very nice. We also get some more stickers right here for the front of the door area. Which these are some pretty big doors. You've got to look very carefully right there to see all of the stickers on those. We get a total of four which I think is crazy. We also get some more of those printed 
window pieces right here on the very sides, which I think is very nice as well. Really love just the look at these and the architecture builds. We also get some of these triangular slope pieces right here, which are very nice to get. Those are introduced within this set, I believe, as well. Get some lights on the very front of Hogwarts. We can see some more rocky bits just underneath right here and just how that all looks. You can see that. We can move over here. We get some more rocky bits going on over here. Very nice and also just like another connection bridge to this side and just how this part connects to the other side of Hogwarts. There's just a lot, a lot to look at over here and then of course this is the part on the very bottom which can connect to the other side of Hogwarts which shows some more references within the interior bits. There's a look up here. You can see all of the very tippity top areas of the castle. All of the different building techniques used for these different types of top pieces. I really like how they include those different types compared to just like these circular round ones over here. And then we also get some very interesting builds for like the very bottom of some of these. Those are pretty cool and just some more extension bits to these. Looking at this interior, we have a lot to look at over here. We have what looks to be the Gryffindor common room. I think it's very interesting to see how they placed these interior bits. Just, It's just weird to think of how they did these. We have the Gryffindor common room over here with the, some of the couches and chairs and also the main fireplace area over there. There aren't any stickers really to note over in this general area, but we do have a sticker over here being like this notice board. That's very nice to see that. As another little reference, we have a little reference over here, just some extra little work. I guess someone's working on something on a blackboard. We have the library over here. Very nice to see that as another little reference. I bet Hermione will like that. No stickers otherwise over there. We get some stickers on the very top of these pillars. Just some small teeny tiny details which add on to this set. There's a look at the back over here from this view. There's a nice look at that. And then that brings you to this area underneath which is supposed to represent the room of requirement. This is very interesting to see that they include all of these different things going on over here. All these different piled up chairs and goblets and display cases and all these different objects. I really like how they represent all of those. Using some stickers on the very top, you can see all these just random Lego parts just represented in sticker form, just miniature scale for the nanofigs. That's very nice. And then adjacent to it, we have the potions room. Really like that they include that. Just another little reference right there. You can put Snape and Harry and Ron and Draco and all them. We get some stickers just to add some other details to the room. Really like how they make those miniature Lego objects just pop up on those shelves. Those are very nice. And then some, and I really like how they use the small cauldron piece in there that works out very nicely. And also the potion bottle, the actual minifigure scale one. I think that's very interesting to see. Included there is just another little, like, it's a huge potion just inside a small classroom with small characters. Moving to the side, we have another look at some more of that exterior bit. And then that brings you all the way over here, which is something that I'm gonna start from the top and then bring you downwards for, which will make a little bit more sense, at least in my opinion, if I look at it like that. So starting over here, we have the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom right here, which also has that megaphone and also the little cupboard with the boggard in it. I really like that. We get some pixies in the background, and then we also have some dark detectors and sneakoscopes and all of that. We also have another really cool reference right there. It has a sticker being, or dragon, or whatever that is. The bone structure of that, that's really cool to see as another little reference. We have some little desks for your characters to stand on. And then we also have the office behind there, which they decided to go with Umbridge's office, which I think is a very nice reference, I guess, as something else that they could have included, just as, like, probably the most colorful, like, room within the entire build of the set. I think that's just crazy that they decided to put that. You can put Umbridge in there, in there if you want. And then moving down, we have just, like, this hallway area. I really like how we get that get some door we get the door to the room of requirement down here which i think is very nice since this is the seventh floor and we get the outer look at there that's if you want to go that way this is right near the great hall as well and then we also have the reference to the chamber 
of secrets has been opened. Enemies of the air, beware. That's very nice that they included that. As another reference of this corridor, that's very nice that they included that. And then down here, we have the pathway to the Philosopher's Stone. Right here we have the Room of the Keys. We get a paintbrush right there to represent a broomstick. I really like how they included that. And then we have some stickers for the keys that are floating around. And then we have the one with the bent wing that Harry has to get to open the door. To move on to the chess room right here, the enchanted chess. I really like that they included that. And then there's a look at the door over there to exit that room. I really like that they included that as a sticker can see how that looks that's very nice you can put your minifigures of Harry Ron and Hermione trying to get through this area and then all the way over here you gotta move the castle over here you can see that we have the mirror of Erised with some fire around it this is where Harry finds the Philosopher's Stone which is represented by that stud inside trans red which I think is just nuts that Lego decided to go with that oh yeah and one other thing that I forgot to talk about is that we do get the devil snare on the other side of the wall the winged keys I think that's really cool that they included that I wonder where fluffy is that's the only question that I really have when it comes to this other than that, that's pretty much all for the exterior of this castle build. I really like how they included so many references. There's just a lot that you can talk about. I, I tried to keep it as short and quick as I could. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I got to say for the interiors. And then like I mentioned before, this set can combine or separate into two different parts. We have this one part that I looked at first. And then we have this other part that I looked at second. When combined, all you gotta do is just combine it like that. You have these Technic axles, which just fit into the Technic pinholes. These two can separate easily, which that is really what that's meant to be. I'm happy that those aren't just regular pins. It makes it a lot easier for those who want to separate this and move it around when they want to. When connected, this is what Hogwarts Castle looks like overall. Very nice looking build, really love how it turned out. And then you can also see just how closely things interconnect, just showing this general area over here. And then also showing the other rocky area in the back. I really like how closely all of this connects just to make it look like one singular big Hogwarts Castle. Overall, this is just an amazing set that LEGO decided to make. It's even really hard to even get this fully pictured within the camera. I really love the size of this thing. I think that LEGO did a wonderful job with that. Though they didn't completely create every single little tidbit of the Hogwarts castle, I think that this is just enough to get you started. I don't know if they ever plan on continuing this micro scale Hogwarts, but I don't think that would be too appealing to some people since I think that this is just enough. And just the look of this thing I think is amazing. I wish that they actually made a Hogwarts this scale, minifigure scale, but I think that also what we have from 2018, 2019, and then coming eventually in 2020 will be enough for those who want a minifigure scale Hogwarts castle. The minifigures included are the four founders, Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Salazar Slytherin, and Rowena Ravenclaw. Those minifigures are all exclusive to the set with very nice exclusive printing on their legs, skirt pieces, and torsos, and even exclusive facial expressions, which I think is nice. I also really like the references of their items of Gryffindor's sword, Hufflepuff's cup, Slytherin's locket, and also Ravenclaw's diadem. The nano figs are something very interesting to include within the set since the interior is a little bit hard to get to if you are displaying the set as such like I'm showing right here in the front of the screen. If you want like an interior look you probably want to turn it around but I don't really think the interior look is really necessary though I think it's great that they include that. The amount of stickers on this set isn't something that I'm really too hyped up about. I would have liked to see some more prints, but I do know that LEGO needs to save money by creating stickers for some parts, and I know that that's something that's necessary when it comes to a set like this. And overall, I think that this is just a wonderful value. For $400, you get a lot of different things, and if you're a huge Harry Potter fan, that's really who would be buying this set, not just any ordinary person, just a huge Harry Potter fan like myself. And that's why I really like this set and it's a very nice thing to have on display as 
the second largest piece count set in the history of LEGO. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I gotta say for this video. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so every time I upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now, and I will see you next time. Bye!